what I was going to say, adding to what Rock said, there's an added benefit of Australia. Rock was touching on the uh, people who have tremendous creative talent. They love sci-fi. Australia gets American TV. And they grew up on Star Trek and on The Outer Limits and on all these other shows. They watch Next Gen and Voyager. So just like we did when we were influenced by the early, the first Star Trek, they have all these ideas and dreams about being in space, and they have creative things that are space-oriented. But the Australian television market, 18 million people, doesn't support high-budget shows. So they're doing a lot of shows that would be cop shows and medical dramas, things that are easier to produce. They can't make a whole universe as Rock has created. So these people not only came in with a high degree of expertise in film experience, which is why our shows look like 22 little movies a year, but they had this backlog of science fiction, I want to do this, I would love to try that, and they've never been able to do it, and all of a sudden, this show is handed them, as Rockney says, it's the biggest train set in the world. And these guys are bringing out, like, it's like unclogging their systems. 40 years worth, you know, one of our directors is 48 years old and he's loved science fiction since he's been five. And he's never once worked on anything science fiction till now. Well, he's a tremendous resource to us because he thinks outside of the proverbial box and gives us ideas that we would have passed over because his mind's been percolating them for 40 years in the outback, you know? And, and, and Aussies are fearless. I mean, they, I mean, they are, tr they're, in front of the camera, behind the camera, they just will lay it on the line and they will just go for it. And, uh, and I mean, that so infuses this show. Um, and again, it, it cross-pollinates with the writing staff and, and then Ben picks up on it and it's just, it's really quite quite a phenomenal experience. It, it helps because we're quite fearful, actually, the two exactly, of us. Exactly. We're, we're terrified of everything. Very, very much fear. Yeah, interviews in particular. Mm. <laughs> we ended up on the sci-fi channel. They were fantastic throughout. They kept saying, make it, make it weird, make it unique, make it different, believe in it more than anything, which was a, one of the most wonderful things that a broadcaster can say. And very, it seems like common sense, but it's, it happens very rarely in this business that a broadcaster will say, what matters to me is that you believe it'll work. And you say, wow, really? <laughs> Because most networks in America say, okay, change this, change this. Where's the little girl? We need the little girl point of view. Okay, where's the little boy? We need the little boy point of view. You can't do this. In fact, you can't do that. No, you can't use electricity because I would You know, and they have all sorts of reasons why you can't do anything on network television. So it was terrific working with the Sci-Fi Channel. And that's really how we ended up here with, with a kind of very sexy, very anarchic, um, but still wonderfully coherent ser series it is probably the most cinematic television show I think on the air. Every, every episode is like a movie. A good idea is a, is a good idea. And one thing that happens, I find, in America often is that good ideas get thrown out just as often as bad ideas. And in, and in some ways, although it's a little cynical, bad ideas get produced almost as often as good ideas and, it, and it's a strange thing that happens in America and it, and it often happens because people are trying to produce to a market opportunity or, or they're trying to read the public and they, they disconnect from their own opinions it's often what happens at networks and stuff and I always knew this was a great idea Rockney knew this was a great idea Alex Rockwell our people in our company knew it was a great idea and when we stick with something we always get it produced it's just a matter of time this was always going to be a hard one because it was producing to a new audience uh, an adult series was new from the Henson company but, uh, they but were... Rod really was the one who took an incredibly bold step he, he, he had started the sci-fi channel um, and, and it was a going concern but playing a lot of essentially reruns of, of my old shows <laughs> and, uh, and, and so um, they were looking for original programming. They had sliders. They bought sliders and were, was doing new episodes of that. But they were looking, Rod was looking for something that he thought might be the uh, cornerstone to original programming and really be kind of the, the, the flagship of the sci-fi channel. And um, I mean, you know, God bless them. The, the guy really took a, took, a, took a gamble. Backstory of, uh, of Farscape is evolving. So it really isn't a backstory. It's the it's a story that is constantly being adjusted and, and, and turned on its ear by all of the staff. I mean, for me, what's, what's exciting is seeing these other minds get into it and what they bring to it and, and, and how they can take something that surprises when I hear some of the ideas, surprises even me. I mean, it's things that obviously had never had in mind for, not had in mind for the show. Um, David is 
the font of, of ideas uh, for Farscape. I mean, he is just a sparkler of, of ideas um, and uh, just I mean, cooks in the, in the writing room um, off of the sparkler. Yes. <laughs> However, uh, what, what Rock is saying is true about the backstory. Rock wrote a Bible before we started work. The Bible, Not the Bible. had a, he wrote the sixth book or the eighth book. Might, we might have skipped some. But it was a small B Bible. It was never intended to be literal. It was a starting place so that the writers and the actors would have a sense of who they were in the past. And uh, in this show, as I say, the fact that we have, in every instance, found cast members who fit the puzzle and are as incredibly talented and daring as our class uh, cast is is extremely exciting. Um, uh, I mean, with obviously Mr. Ben Browder as the uh, at the at the uh, pinnacle of that. Uh, in the episode uh, "Crackers Don't Matter," any actor who is the you know the macho male star of an action adventure show who is willing to get into that getup that he's in at the end of the episode. <laughs> It's an amazingly bold, smart, very smart, um, very confident actor. I'm just proud that I kind of let it go other than I get involved in where it's going, where the direction of it is going, and making sure that it, that it stays gutsy. I think that the fear of making a bad decision can kill a show and not allow it to grow. So, so I, I'm part of the influence that keeps going in saying, you know what, go for it. You know what, try that idea. You know what? you know, try that alien or, or try that big story or, okay, let's spend a little more on that episode even though it seems outrageous and, and, and uh, you know, keep pushing them to make a great show. I always say to them, you know, with a show like this, if you're not going for the brass ring, there's, there's almost no point in trying. If, you're gonna, if we're going to make a science fiction series, it's got to be the best. And if, we're, and if it's the best, we have to tell the world it's the best. It's got to be the number one science fiction show. We have to build a franchise. I want to see us making movies of this series, and I want us to expand it and, and make it a, a, you know, a real phenomenon. You know, I think the Farscape effect needs to be felt world over. <laughs> All right, now you guys need to understand that I'm... I'm petrified here. <laughs> I saw a Galaxy Quest, and that's my entire... Uh... <laughs> never surrender, never give up! <laughs> but I, you know, I figure that the, the one way into this whole deal is to come up with that catchphrase, so... Uh, uh, I'm gonna need a little help here. Okay, uh, these are my notes. <laughs> Guys, tell me what you think about these. Humans are superior! <laughs> Chiana and I are having fantastic sex. <laughs> you all know this one? It's a spoiler. I have clearance from Mr. Kemper. <laughs> <laughs>